Hey guys, what is going on? Um, today we're just going to be doing a video. It's not going to be a tutorial. It's just going to be uh, me creating my Minecraft mouth. And I thought I would record it. Um, I may do a speed up of this, so you probably won't even hear this commentary. But uh, if I decide not to, then you probably will hear it. So um, I'm just going to go through it, and hopefully you enjoy and pick up some tips and tricks on the way. So let's um, get started, I guess. Um, so I've, I've got here, which is basically a base mesh, and um, if I unhide the uh, skull, you can see this is what it is. It's just um, fitting in this section. Now the reason it's so big um, is because when you come to animate the mouth, such as um, changing the um, the width and height, you need more room than, than is necessary. And the reason you need more room than necessary is because when you start overlapping polygons, you're going to get some really weird results. So by giving yourself more room, you will avoid this entirely, which is, uh, well, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hide this, and I'm just going to continue with the mouth, because I, there's not much to do with the mouth, to be honest. Um, it's going to be very simple. Um... Same with the controls and, and stuff, however, is going to take a little bit more time, which I may do in this episode, I'm not sure. Um, but this is what I've got. Um, the, the, the default mouth will have this this regular gap. However, uh, I don't like the fact that it's it's so wide. I don't want him to have a wide mouth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some, um, some of these points here. And I'm going to make a selection of this. I'm going to go to Selection and Set Selection. And this is going to be the master selection, if you like. And I'm going to just scale these in slightly. And scaling these in, um, your middle point will always stay in center because it's the center point. The other ones, however, will scale um, from this position, which is cool. Um, so now if we hit render, you can see we've got a very much shorter mouth. However, the the, the floor and, and the stuff of the polygons um, react properly, um, so to speak. So... Um, when I add hypernerbs, um, we've got a few issues. One of them is that the edges do not keep 100% um, straight. So there's two things I could do. I could add in, add in um, extra control edges to keep this um, extremely sharp. Or I could cheat um, and basically just grab the edges. And I'll grab these ones as well. And this one I said. And the bottom ones as well. And I'm going to um, hold period key and drag in to make this extremely sharp. Now I may try it on this one. It depends what it's going to give me. It's going to give me a nice hard edge at the edge. Um, which is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these. And I'm going to do it about 50%. So that's 100%. Something like that is going to be... Roughly 50%. You can't really say it's 50%, um, but you know it looks good. That's the main point. If it looks good, it's good. Um, so this is what we've got so far, and it's it's very simple to create this mouth. Um, and why is that so high? That's better. Um, so yeah, this is what we've got so far. Uh, we had a, we haven't had to add any more edges. So the mesh is, is pretty clean, um, very workable uh, and simple, and that's what I want. I want it simplified. Um, so yeah, we've got this, and we're going to have to add in um, some a little bit of detail at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the edge mode, and I'm going to grab UL, and I'm going to grab all these edges here. However, I'm going to deselect first UL, and I'm going to uncheck that so I can grab the inner and then I'm going to grab the move tool, hold control and drag out. That's going to give us a little lip and that's going to be the character's um, mouth, so to speak. I'm going to flip around the back and now we need to create the inside of the character's mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the scale tool, I'm going to hold control and scale this out and then I'm going to even the proportions a little bit. Uh, something like so and then I'm scaling both of these out and what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to go all the way I'm going to do something like this and then once I've got this I'm going to use the uh, control to pull this out but before I do that what I want to do is I want to line up 
these edges that we um, we basically changed. So I'm just going to copy the position on the x axis and just line these up um, a little bit, just a little bit straighter. Um, this one and actually it's the same because it is symmetrical. We just need to take out the minus. And hey presto, we have something rather good. There we go. So you can see now it's all even and that's really important, especially because this is going to be behind this object. So things will start to get a little bit wonky and you know, it's best just to keep it clean is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to drag this out. Something, uh, it doesn't really matter how far you drag it out, but I'm just going to go around there. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to bring it back. Something like that. And then I'm going to control drag again. And then control drag again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, probably just bridge these up. So this section here, this section, this section, and this section. So there we go. So now when we had the hyperdose back on, we're going to get this type of object. Now it doesn't matter that these sides are curved. And the reason for that is because it's going to be inside the mouth. So I'm not really bothered about that. Uh, however, I did want to keep some relatively sharp edges on the ends. So that's why um, I added the extra control edges. Now, of course, if I wanted to um, make this a lot more sharper, I could. But there's just no need. It's just a waste of time and um, adding more geometry, which you don't really need. Because at the end of the day, all you're going to see is that. And you're rarely, if ever, going to see inside the mouth. So what does it matter? Um, and if one day I do do a really close-up mouth shot, this can be easily changed, scaled, or then points added. But for right now, there's just no need, so don't do it. Um, so we've got our mouth, you know, we've got the front plate of the mouth and then we've got the inners of the mouth. So if we turn on the, the head, the full head, you can see here, this is what we get. Now, of course, it's a little bit weird to look at right now, but let me just try and grab the same colour, which is a little bit difficult um, because of the shading. As you see, this side is a bit darker than this side, so hopefully we can pick a similar colour that will blend. Um, just, just say that. And the reason I do it in a render view is because... If you don't, it, it can look weird. Like if I run this out, you see, I, even though I picked that color, it's completely different. Um, so what I would have to realistically do is go into Photoshop and grab the color. But, you know, that being said, uh, let's just continue. Um, maybe if I can pick it off of the actual um, section here and editing is going to actually bring up Photoshop. No! <laughs> oh, well. I'll grab the colour because I really need to see this blended in together, which is going to help. Um, so I'm using the RGB um, values, so in Photoshop, once it's uh, loaded, we're going to um, go in here and we're going to zoom in and we're going to um, pick the colour closest to the mouth and on here it's going to be 222181. 15A. Now I'm going to forget the numbers, um, but let's try 222-181, and I think it's 15A. If I remember that, I'm, I'm a genius. Oh my god, I'm so good. I'm old. What do you expect? My memory's going. <laughs> There we go, so perfectly blended in. Um, we're going to get some issues here, and that's because we don't have a thong tag. So let's right click and go to Simma 4D and put on a thong. Uh, because thongs are sexy, right? And let's put this down to about 60 for now. And then render again, and you can see we get we get much better results. And we don't have much pinching and stuff, so it looks relatively good. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now one thing I do like to do is go into the render settings and stick on an ambient occlusion. That way when I render out I can actually see detail in the actual um, face and whatnot. But sometimes you do have to adjust the maximum. Um, so that the head itself is 50, I'm going to put this down to 25. And that way when we render out you see we don't get massive dark shadows now. We get some around the edges. Um, again you could probably go lower as 15 on a Minecraft head to be honest. But that being said, um, if we just do a quick render from distance, yeah it looks good. Um, we don't have any weird 
um, you know, shading around the edges where the plate meets up with the face. So that's really important. Um, also, this is a little bit smooth for my liking. So I'm going to select these edges again. I'm going to stick on the hyperneb so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to just increase this ever so slightly. Now, one of the things that is happening here is even if we go 100% um, sharp, the problem is because of this area here now, we've added extra geometry. So what I think I might do is, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to sharpen up that, which I think will probably make the big difference. So I'm going to go to the knife tool. I'm going to use the loop tool. And I'm going to zoom in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control D and change my clip into small. That way I can get a really nice zoom in on this. And um, give this a really even section. And it should look... Yeah, it looks way better now. So let me just do another render. And that looks better. It looks like it's got a, a lot more structure to the actual mouth now. Um, so one thing that still bothers me is this is um, very... Um, what's the word? It's very flimsy, so to speak. So I'm making sure that I've just got the them edges selected. And I'll just add a little bit of... Um, yeah, so that's not going to work. So what I will have to do is I will have to select surrounding edges, which isn't particularly what I wanted to do. Um, so let me just grab these. That looks all right. So let's just give this a gander. So yeah, as you can see, um, things aren't looking particularly great. So let me turn off that and see what's going on. So I'm going to need these edges here, of course. And let's put on hypernerves. And all we're trying to do is tighten this up a little bit. Now I think the problem we're having here is these need to be selected as well. So it's a little bit of trial and error. As you can see, it's getting a little bit better. Um, not by much though. So I'm just thinking um, how to improve um, this edge. Now I can do it quite easily by adding in a control edge or even bringing this edge here further to the sides. Um, however, I think it's just going to cause um, some issues. So I may leave it for now and see how the um, pinching and stuff goes. Because I mean, it doesn't look terribly bad. Uh, and from a distance anyway, when you see a Minecraft character, you're not really going to notice to be fair. Um, and it's all about convenience. Um, if you're doing close-up shops, then I doubt it's the end of the world that the mouth is a little bit soft. But, um, you know, I'm trying to make it simplistic. And if I don't have to deal with pinching later on when it comes to adding the post mouth, which is the pin in the backside part, then, you know, so be it. That's going to be great for me. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think that's okay, to be fair. Um, yeah, it looks okay. I'm quite happy with that. All right, I'll leave it as is. Um, so now that we've got the face and it looks pretty good, we need now need to add in the um, the the pose mouths to control the mouth features. So I'm happy with the, the base look of the mouth. Um, I know the eyes look a little bit weird, and that's because the uh, it hasn't got the um, half of eye in. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with how that looks. Um, I'm just thinking, because when I control it with um, controls, that has to be the 50% mark, so center. And then minus 50% needs to be really far in, and then the other half needs to be plus 50%, which is really wide out. So let me just um, give this a whirl. Turn off the hypernodes because they're irrelevant right now. Um, Right click, go to, actually let's just go to character, um, add point moth, name this to mouth moth, and in the tags we will use this as mouth pose, and we will name this um, mouth um, width. 
plus 50. And make another one. Now with minus 50. And then make one more. Mouth height plus 50. And that's all we need because the mouth right now is exactly where we want it. And um, that's the closed state, um, which is this base post. So we don't have to add a height minus 50 because it already is um, the minus 50, if you like, because it's not going to go any further than that. However, with the um, width, it's going to go in a lot but shorter than that and a lot wider than that so that's why we need two for that so let me just um crack on with this and you'll you'll kind of understand how this works so hopefully we can use the um, restore selection um and i'm gonna have to add to this selection unfortunately which is these here now i need to be careful that i add everything in so it might be ideal to just turn off this for now grab these grab them and you making sure they're all selected which they seem to be and if we look at the axis tool it should be in the center which it is so I'm going to go to select and set selection which is going to override the existing selection because it is already selected and then it allows us to go into the post morph and the plus 50 means plus 50 so we're going to add in the widest gap and it looks like we didn't have all of them selected there which one is a straggler it's just there so let's grab that as well and then click on this selection set selection and let's just do a quick test here um, by bringing all these out and yeah okay sweet so that's perfect so on the 50 plus what we need to do is grab these and bring them out to the maximum that we would want to allow which I guess would be this now this is overkill um, but we would never have to go this far but it's nice to have this much if we ever need it so as you can see from there to there that's the widest now for the smallest we're gonna go in here I'm gonna go in really tight because we're gonna need to go in extremely close here to make sure we don't have any overlapping but it is as as close as possible and something like that looks perfect so even though that's the extreme we would never go that far because it's just weird um, we have them pauses if we need it now for the height now I don't need to adjust these top ones because that's the boundary box even though it's moving on the um, what's this the x-axis left and right it's not going to make a difference um, because the points are just moving it's not actually moving back and forth so I'm not going to see any gaps however if we move this up and down it's going to overlap existing geometry which can become a problem so I'm just going to deselect these, which is very simple. Um, even on the other ones, such as the um, left and right, you don't necessarily have to have them because these will move. But I just find it easier to do it that way. And it keeps everything really nice, especially when you're coming in really, really close like we did. Um, you can get points that do overlap. So just be careful with that. Um, again, I'm going to grab this um, tool and I'm going to scale this up like so, as wide as I want it which in this case is going to be about there simply because the back of the mouth here um, is kind of in, encroaching into our area so I think that's okay I might just go down a tiny bit something like that um, just something that works for me so yeah it looks pretty cool it's got no teeth right now so it looks weird but you know it'll look cool I'm sure um, so what we can do now is go to animate and we can animate these so you can see it goes left and right which is fantastic 
really wide um, and of course down again so we can animate these in any which way we want and even though these are separate tools I would normally put these into one tool so what I would do with my base mesh would be move everything to the extreme lowest position so it would be that and then I would just have it go into the extreme position which would be that um, however I think this might work I'm not sure I may redo it I'm not quite sure yet um, but yeah and then we've got the width one which is very easy because it's, it, it's like I was explaining before um, that's the base mesh already so going to the extreme is fine because it's just one two one two with this one it's one two three four so I've, I've got you know some extra um, controls in here that I don't actually really need uh, so I could just redo that now if I wanted to but um, I'm, I want to go see if it works like this first um, so let's start adding in um, what do we want to add in? We want to add in some controls. Um, so let's just start off with some really, really basic controls right now. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, it's still quite early. I'm tired. Oh. Um, but let's see. So I want the mouth to open up, up and down, which needs one control up and down. I then need a control for left and right, so a plus, no a plus wouldn't work, would a T work, I'm trying to think of the, um, the way I'm going to set out the controls, because they are quite important, um, I can have two, I don't know, the plus just seems, I can do the L, and... I don't know. Setting the controls is really important for me because I need them to look good and be realistic for when um, they come to you know practical use. Um, so I mean, this is what I originally had, but I decided not to use joints. I decided to use post moles instead, which maybe was a mistake. I'm not quite sure. Um, Oh, let's see. Well, let's just get the um, the footwork done first, I suppose. Let's just grab a rectangle and we can bring it up here. Reduce the size to four. And we can bring it just to the side for now. And minus 80. I'm pretty sure I said minus 80, didn't I? Thank you. Right. Let's pop that over here. Right, so we've got this object here. Um, I'll put it in the middle just for now, I think. And make that editable. Give it a colour, just somewhere bright so I can see it and distinguish it from the lines. Um, okay, so let's add in a Expresso tag. And what we want here is um, the, the rectangle to go in because that's the controller. I'll just name rectangle for now. We want the post morph to go in because that's the um, what we're going to need and we want this to move up on the Y and down on the um, the Y as well so up and down that's this is to open the mouth um, so what we're going to need is the rectangle to focus on the position and it's going to be the Y position up and down and I want it to be connected to the tags and I want it to be connected to the height um, so we've got height plus uh, which is what we need so height plus um, strength which is what we want so now we've got that, we need to right click new Expresso and we want to use a calculate and a range mapper because we need to give this the right properties to use. Um, so let's go over to here, right click and do a protection tag and go to limit. Um, before I actually add that, I need to think of it. 
um, I need to go to coordinates and just freeze these coordinates so it stays here because when you add the protection tag um, it goes to and you lock it and limit it it, minim it zeroes it out to zero zero now for this zero zero is right down here in, in world center and we're not actually working in world center at the minute so we needed to lock the coordinates and then add this so let's just say um, we want to give this um, if my mouse works um, minimum let's say minus five and the maximum is five so five pixels up five pixels down in fact let me change that to eight um, eight pixels no, no, let's actually do ten ten actually might work yeah so ten and ten so when it's at zero 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 it's going to be fifty percent um, and then in the range map we need to do input which is usually defined um, and then output is going to be um, percent because we want the percent of this uh, range mapper um, and the input lobby is going to be minus 10 and this is going to be 10 a little confusing but try keep up um, and then we're going to link these together which basically now means um, as you saw this is 50 percent it's in the center if I go up it's going to give them the maximum if I go down it's going to give the minimum which is really really cool actually um, yeah so it, it works really really well um, now that being said what I'm gonna do is because this works so well uh, I'm gonna go back into the edit and I'm gonna go back into well the base pause and make sure that I've got these selected and I'm going to um, the width is negative I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that I'm gonna delete the the max as you know I'm gonna keep the max delete the um, negative and on the base pause on the base pause I'm going to I think this should work I'm gonna scale these bad boys in really 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 close together again something like that will do and then on this we should have that and that so yeah, it works, however we're getting a little bit of a problem here and that's just because of the base pause is now changed. However, um, this one doesn't have the full range of motion so we're going to give that back to it. And then on here, that's fine. That's good, that's good. So let's go to animate and then we can just test this out. Um, so this one is controlled by the other one so that doesn't work now this one however does work so what we're going to do is we're going to um, duplicate that method again we're going to create a um, rectangle it's going to be um well object's going to be five by five was it five by five and i want it to be at well up here and it was, I think it was 4x4. Four four. So 4x4. Four four. And I could probably just do this easier by lining it up, but let me just eyeball it for now. Um, bring it across here and then give this a minus 80, which is where all the other controls are. Make it editable. Give it a colour. Let's give this one a slightly different colour because it's a different control. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to bring back in the Espresso. So this is going to be that. We're going to duplicate that. And we're going to duplicate that, in fact. Remove that part and stick in the height width, I think it is. Yeah. Width strength. Pop that in. Pop that in over here. And this is going to be the... Um, let's actually not connect that just yet we will go to this rectangle we will freeze the coordinates because it's important that you freeze it and then we're just going to duplicate this um, limit tag onto here and then now we can combine these position Y and now if we um, bring this up and down you can see this is what we get um, really really cool So yeah, 
and you can give these like a certain degree and then move them up. Wah 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 wah. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Kind of work pretty well, I think. And we can get both of these and just reset the PSR to give us our neutral mouth, which isn't particularly what we want. So I can bring this down to minus 10, and this can be something like that. So that could work. Um, what I may do is reduce the amount that they can move, um, and that way it's going to be a little bit better. Also, these are going to be connected to another object, so I can move them both together. Um, which will give us that kind of automatic mouth type thing. Um, but I'm going to save that because we've made some really, really good progress on this mouth. And if we just bring back the head, um, and, you know, if we just grab these and move it up, and this one, move this up, and we can get some really nice, um, some really, really nice results from that. As you can see, it looks pretty damn good in my opinion. Uh, and that is coming along like a real treat. Um, all we need to do now is add in the teeth, um, completely add in some more, um, you know, um, pose morphs, if you like, for the smile and frown and stuff, um, and then add the controls in for that. And then we could um, set up the user controls properly um, and conveniently. Uh, and then that should be it. So uh, if you want to see that in the next episode, make sure you leave a comment about it. If not, I'll just do it um, without recording. Um, but if you really want to see that, you know, the finishing up the product, then let me know. Um, and I will catch you in the next episode. And I, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, just a casual video of me going through the process of making things. You know, I do make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Um, and there's things that I've got to work around. And things that I just, you know, need to decide, do I spend the extra time on it or do I just continue? Um, as you saw, um, we, we changed the, uh, the mouth width and stuff instead of having a minus and a plus. Just because it's a lot easier, it's quicker. Um, however, we did have to go back and change that. So, that being said, um, yeah, hope you enjoy this. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you leave a comment. I love reading your guys' comments. And um, I will catch you in the next episode. Peace, guys.